Uh, this is the session about uh, the MailChimp integration for Joomla. Um, how many of you actually use uh, MailChimp? All right, so that seems to be the interest group. Um, and have you also been using uh, Joomla Mailer? I'm just trying, uh, trying to feel kind of uh, how much you already know and uh, whether I should keep it simple or a bit more um, into details. Uh, who wants to keep it simple? You know, raise your hand. Okay, great. Only two, so we'll, we'll make it difficult. All right. Um, so we're going to be talking about um, five things today. I'll introduce uh, us and Joomla Mailer to you guys, and then um, we're going to cover the three major points that the Joomla Mailer is about, um, how you manage your subscribers, um, how you can create your email campaigns, what else you can do um, during that process, and what third-party integrations we have integrated with. And then um, we'll talk about a couple of things that uh, we have thought up about the future. All right, uh, we're a German company. Um, at the moment, we're expanding. We're almost nine people. Um, we currently live in Mallorca and work from there. Uh, we have a pretty international team. A um, couple guys in the States, one in Australia, and then um, only one of us is German. We've got a Bulgarian Daniel on the back here with us. And um, so it's great to be on such an international team. What we do is uh, mostly custom development client projects and a bit less than half of our time goes to Joomla extensions development. And obviously uh, it's all involving project management. So right, why MailChimp? Oh, how do I get rid of that? Okay, why MailChimp? Um, of all the different uh, email service providers, they have a very um, open source community friendly plan um, in our opinion. Um, being able to manage 2,000 subscribers and 12,000 emails per month for free um, pretty much ensures you that you're going to be getting your business off the ground before you're actually going to start paying any money um, for using their infrastructure. And the advantage in, um, with their payment plan is also that uh, um, you have pay-as-you-go and uh, pay monthly options so that you can retain full control over your costs. Um, but I guess since all you guys or most of you are using it, you already know that. So we'll move on. So Joomla Mayor. It's a feature-rich integration with the MailChimp API. We know that now. Um, and we wanted to take it to the point that it can actually replace completely the MailChimp interface and that you can manage everything from your back end. Um, let me tell you a little story about that first. Um, about one and a half years ago, um, we needed a, a newsletter system and we were looking around and came across Campaign Monitor. You might know Joomailer, um, the previous version to Joomla Mailer before we split one from the other. And that was pretty much also the inspiration, I guess, uh, for MailChimp to get in touch with us to uh, port it to, to their API. And this is how um, Joomla Mailer came about. Uh, the highlights are um, adding contents to your newsletters uh, by um, just checking checkboxes and that will automatically add it uh, to your newsletters. Um, importing your Joomla site users has probably never been easier um, into MailChimp. And you have a slick uh, template editor with which you can um, edit the placeholders where you want your contents to appear when you select them um, in the campaign creation process. Um, and obviously third-party integrations, which uh, are very big in Joomla. Um, so we are starting to integrate more with uh, very popular ones like K2 and Jom Social. But I'll get into this a little bit later. If I talk too fast or something, please tell me and I'll slow down. Um, basically, we're coming to the end of the intro, and um, a lot of you have probably already seen the screen. You just have a package. Um, Joomla Mailer consists of a couple of components. One is the registration component, which you don't even know exists. Um, it's activated by the uh, registration plugin and allows you to override um, your registration process. I'll get to that in a second. You enter your API key, and you get to the dashboard where all the good things happen. Um, by the way, if you have any questions, since we're not so many, you can raise your hand at any time, you know, and I'll try to get to you. If it's a bit too elaborate, I'll just uh, um, remember till the end. Um, this is our dashboard. 
um, we have tried to simplify MailChimp a little bit um, to improve the user experience in Joomla as they're used to it. Also, um, in order to keep a familiar look and feel in general uh, with the Joomla interface. So we didn't um, go crazy on the design, just kept it subtle, but a bit uh, nicer than the Joomla one. Um, you can basically reach all the important things that you're doing in MailChimp while managing your newsletters and subscribers from the dashboard. You can um, view campaigns that you've already sent. You get a very quick overview of how they've performed, um, the most recent ones. Same as if you've created a draft, you can access it from here and then send it off later on. Whoops. All right. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we'll get straight to subscriber management now. This is the first thing that you usually do when setting up your, uh, your Joomla mailer extension. Um, you try to decide how you're going to be registering your users to your lists. There's t three different ways. One I've mentioned it's the registration plugin, which overrides the registration process. So you get a checkbox um, on the registration page when a user clicks sign up or whatever you call it, and he can place a checkbox for the newsletter. Um, then we have the subscription module and what I've previously talked about, the import function. So let's look at these. Oh yeah, first and foremost, um, MailChimp gives you the, the ability to segment your, your user base based on interests and um, birth date, date of pretty much anything that you can think of. You can create a text field or drop down for multi-select box. Um, and then assign values, for example, uh, what's your favorite country? You know, if uh, you have a sports site, what's your favorite sport? And that way when they sign up for your site, they can say, I'm particularly interested in soccer or basketball or golf. Um, our registration plugin will then override the registration page of Joomla with these options in addition to the newsletter checkbox. So they can choose this before um, registering to your site. Um, a feature which apparently was used by a lot of uh, users based on the feedback that we've gotten was the import site users. Um, on the dashboard you have the, the little menu. Oh, have you guys been hearing me all this time? <laughs> um, the top menu, it's a second item, it's called lists. Um, you basically get just a, just a listing of your list and when you click on one of the lists to add users, uh, you get a really long list depending on how many you're showing um, of all your site users. You can uh, filter them by, by groups, um, by their last visit for example, in case you only want to import the users that have been on your site or have registered on your site for the past two, three months. So you keep your list pretty clean. And then you select the check boxes of the users you want or all and hit the add to MailChimp button. And that's it, you know, you have your list fully populated. Now you can also do this with Sugar CRM and High Rise at the same time. You'll just get two more buttons, you click them after another and you populate your, um, your Sugar or High Rise accounts with the same users that you would your MailChimp accounts. Lists, I mean, sorry. Yes, please. Um, MailChimp does have a policy against uh, using such generic emails, but I'm actually not entirely sure if the API blocks them at the moment, but um, I'll let you know. Um, after the presentation, I can tell you in detail. It does filter out the uh, duplicates, um, for example. That, that's for sure. Oh, um, when somebody signs up on your site, with a plugin, you know, when you import the site, users, I think it might block it, but actually when somebody signs up, uh, then it, it won't stop them. But this is something that uh, we've let them know. Um, so yeah, setting up the registration plugin, which I've just been talking about, even though I didn't have the slide up. Um, it's extremely simple. You know, you just pick the list, you know, pick the fields that you want to display, and then the interest groups. Um, and then whether you also want them to add them to Sugar CRM or High Rise. So this is basically um, the alternative to the import function, um, which most people use. And 
these things then display uh, these options display the, the different uh, multi select boxes or drop downs or whatever you chose um, on the registration page and it works um, with with most templates 99 percent we've also added some um, little check if uh, morph is installed so it'll even work with morph um, if you create um, additional profile fields in drum social or in community builder you can also link them up via the interest groups and have those uh, that data that um, the new user enters also pass on to MailChimp. So you can get really into elaborate um, data mining with uh, if you have Jump Social on your site installed or Community Builder. So how's the workflow of the registration plugin? Um, I've been told I should highlight this because it's neat. Um, so basically the user fills it out, clicks the registration uh, button, um, and he opts in for the newsletter, and then he receives the Joomla activation email, which we have uh, transformed through our plugin to also opt him into the newsletter so that it, he doesn't get two emails and it's then redundant. Um, because at the at the end of the day, he did decide to j join your site. You have to act. He has to activate the account, and he opted in basically. So um, I think that'd be a bad user experience in that sense. Oh, and additionally, it uh, tracks the IP when they click the the link now um, in the activation email, so that Mailchimp knows from what area they are, so that you can use features like geo targeting or time warp because you can also segment uh, based on location. Um, yes, please. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's a, this is a standard Joomla email, basically. I think it's uh, done with language strings, isn't it, Kyle? Yeah, all right. And then last but not least, it's actually also one of our uh, newest additions. It's uh, the subscription module. It does exactly the same as the registration plugin. Um, has the same fields, except you can enter uh, intro text and uh, what will appear after they submitted their email. Um, the only difference is that you can place several modules on your site anywhere. You just don't have to be registered for your site. And you can um, add users to different uh, lists, which is particularly interesting for um, sites with a lot of different areas that need a lot of sub-segmentation. Everything clear? Yeah. Did you have a question by any chance? Mm -hmm. it's, you know, we never thought of that. But then again, um, why would you necessarily try to subscribe? Uh, you mean have them both? So you mean to have a user be added to multiple lists at the same time? Oh yeah, that's uh, the, the list right there in the middle, which is called Joomla Mailer at the moment. So it's a drop down, so you can only add a user to one list, yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Um, those are basically the interests for this particular list. When I took the screenshot, I didn't have any, but uh, they'll appear there just like um, for your registration plugin. So you, you can only select one list mm -hmm. for Yes, because uh, to MailChimp generally doesn't encourage you to use too many lists anyway, because they also, yeah. hmm? Mm -hmm. Well, you you can absolutely do that with the interest groups, you know. And theoretically, with with a tiny little bit of hacking, you can even do it invisible, you know, based on what Joomfish or site, uh, um, because you can pass hidden values to interest groups. Um, you know, just drop a post in our forum, and and Pete will help you out. So um, the highlight of of Joomla Mail is probably the ease with which you can put together your newsletters. Um, uh, here we can see the colors haven't changed quite yet, but anyway, we'll continue straight on. Um, 
so there's three steps to your first campaign. Um, you first create your template or modify an existing one um, to match your corporate identity. After that, you create a newsletter draft, and then you send your newsletter campaign. I actually uh, forgot to write down that you'll be watching your stats probably for a while. So creating templates. Um, it looks confusing in, in the first moment, but once you understand uh, that you have to add certain placeholders so that you can pick the, the contents from your site and add them to your newsletter, um, it becomes more clear. Um, we recommend that you actually edit your template the first time you, you start using it instead of uh, just starting from scratch because everything is already set up and all you need to do is just change some color as your font and upload a new header. Um, things are already all nicely lined up. Um, one gimmick that we added was uh, uh, via the Color Lovers API, we're pulling some palettes based on uh, some base color that you're choosing. I actually talked to um, one of the guys earlier and they're going to help us out um, pull the template colors in so that they're pre-populated with your template colors, the fields, so it'll make it even easier to get started in the beginning. Um, every time you click one of those palettes, it'll reshuffle all the colors of your template so you can go crazy without having to pick any specific colors until you like a combination. Um, I'm not sure, they have their own palettes, not the color lover ones. Now they have a pretty cool feature where they actually do uh, pull out some colors from your site if you type in your... Uh. So creating drafts. Um, if you recognize this, this is from the dashboard. Um, that's also the easiest way to access it. Um, and the actual process is five steps. And um, at the end, you can save and revise before you start sending this off. So the first, ta the first tab are the main settings. You can um, pre-populate those uh, from the configuration of, of Joomla Mailer, so you don't have to fill them out every time. Um, the only thing you'll have to do is uh, fill out the campaign name and the subject. Going to the next tab, which is the more interesting one, um, is the, the actual content. And, and this is what we particularly enjoyed when we first built it because we wrote some updates on our blog about Jumailer and all we did was place a checkbox and just send out an email and then everybody knew about it. Unfortunately, we didn't have too much time lately to do this because we've been busy with this. But um, what you do is you choose your template and you have a WYSIWYG. You can you know, insert images, anything that you would do also on your site. The only thing you have to keep in mind that your email client won't you know, render the nicest HTML or CSS. Um, and if you look below, um, the Joomla core and the K2 selection options look identical. You just place a checkbox with include, choose if you want the intro or the full text, if you want the read more button or not, and then you move on to the next um, tab. This is obviously only going to be functional if you have a sidebar in your template or have placed the placeholders at any place in your template. Um, there's a lot of little features like table of contents, um, popular articles, whether you want K2 articles in it or not, um, your social credentials, and um, it only takes a click to add all of these things to your newsletter. And also what, what we use the sidebar for um, in particular, and this is why it was requested, is for people to put ads in their newsletters. And so all you do is just click the image button and upload them, add them. By the way, at any point in time, oh, at any point in time, you can hit the preview button and um, see what it looks like, what you've done so far. On the next tab, you, um, if you've got your Google Analytics credentials set up on the parameters um, view, you can then flip it on, and all the stats from your newsletter um, will then also show up in Google Analytics. And the last step, this is something that kind of goes under on MailChimp's interface, which is the folders management. We thought it was pretty essential every time you create a campaign to also really assign it to 
a folder unless you're sending only one every three months. Um, that probably won't matter, but um, we wanted to get our users into the habit of categorizing their campaigns so that it's easier to uh, pull out their stats later on and, and compare them. And at the end, if you hit the preview button, or at any point in time, you get a preview of what your newsletter will look like. Um, oh, actually, I apologize. On the right-hand side, next to the WYSIWYG, you have the merch tags, which are available. Um, and you can just enter by placing your cursor anywhere in the WYSIWYG and selecting one from the drop-down. Um, all of them from all the lists will be displayed, but only those um, that will work with the list that you're sending to will actually appear in the newsletter. Um, there was no other way to really let you choose which list you want to send to before you actually go to the send page. All right. Come on. So, sending your campaign. Has anybody ever had any trouble with this page while, while using it? Um, was it too complicated? Okay, Nacho. Okay, we'll talk later about that. <laughs> so, on, at the top, you choose your list. You can't really tell it that, read it that well, but uh, it's all you really do at the top. You always have your tracking stuff on, unless for some reason you don't want to track it. Um, you can send a test campaign um, to up to five emails. Um, I personally recommend doing that every time we do, um, but you can also excuse me. Yeah. We can also alternatively um, schedule the the campaign for two hours in the future, and then you can pause it and go into Mailchimp and do all the inbox inspections and all the other tools that they let you analyze your newsletter with. Um, Below the scheduling and sending, because not a lot of people do the segmentation always, we, we put it down in priority. Um, you can, just like in MailChimp, you can add as many conditions as you want. Um, you can turn it on and off. Um, and it also actually does most of the segmentation options that MailChimp does. Also some social ones, um, social age, social networks. So you can, for example, send a Facebook promotion only to the members. Um, to your members that are also on Facebook. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. This is a feature I particularly like a lot. It's time warp. If you're into that kind of stuff like uh, sending people a coupon for a particular thing like a dinner, I don't know, um, then you can time it so that they receive it an hour before the dinner or um, if you have some important business um, newsletters with products that you want people to receive in the morning at 9 a.m. when they reach the office um, to read it, then this time warp feature, um, you can turn it on and basically based on the IP that the user subscribed with, he'll be assigned to a time zone and then he will receive the email at, for example, 9 a.m. in his particular time zone. The only drawback is if you're kind of a last minute person, then um, this probably won't be good for you because uh, you have to schedule it 24 hours ahead of time. So here's a couple of examples that I was talking about. Um, if you don't want to get a lot of spam complaints, you know, just uh, exclude Hotmail. Those guys seem to be very eager always. Um, your social network, uh, your member ratings, this is a good one. Uh, to filter out people that just won't open your emails. Um, MailChimp generally gives them a pretty good score. Um, do you have any particular questions about segmentation? Is, do you ever have any trouble? Anybody do any advanced segmentation? All right, good to know. Well, maybe you will after the session. So autoresponders. This was at the very bottom of the send page. We didn't separate this like MailChimp does on their interface with different create buttons and everything, um, just to keep it all a bit simpler. Because ultimately, you're going through the same process, and instead of sending it, you just save it at the end um, with a couple options that, um, that uh, specify when that particular campaign is sent out. 
Um, we had a we had a client recently. He's a gynecologist from Berlin, and he wanted to send some baby mails, which is basically. Um, a pregnant woman signs up with her estimated birth date um, to this baby mail and then she gets every week um, based on what week of her pregnancy she's in um, information about the, that stage of pregnancy. For example, um, week seven, you know, the little one is, I don't know, seven inches big or something and <laughs> Okay, sorry, I, I usually do a centimeters. <laughs> so the reports after you've sent your campaign you've segmented it nicely and and um, you have your clean list and then you're usually excited to you know press the refresh button every 30 seconds to see how it develops because in the first couple of hours you'll see the most action if your newsletter goes out and um We've tried to put everything that we can get out of MailChimp um, onto an internal reports page, um, just in case uh, you have a higher up that um, just likes managing all this stuff from the back end, or a client that you um, don't need to explain the entire MailChimp interface to, because mostly they'll be used to Joomla. Um, At the top you have the pie chart with the opens and bounces and and not opens. And this will look pretty familiar from the MailChimp interface. What we have done, we have um, reduced that, that huge world map and, and put it in this tiny little module at the top right. So you can still get those stats as well but without so much wasted space. Um, I think in December we added the, the comparison function what you do is uh, we've added checkboxes and you can select as many or as little as you want and then you, you, you pick the metric that interests you. And then you can compare over time how your campaigns have performed. Um, and then analyze why things are happening that way. For example, in this case, um, at the third uh, update notification that we sent out, uh, our subscriber list had drastically increased and that's why for some reason um, or as predicted uh, the opening rate dropped and then start picking up a little bit and that's basically what this chart tells you. Um, how many of you guys know Analytics 360 from Crowd Favorite for WordPress? No? Good. Um, that's a that's an older plugin for, for MailChimp, uh, from MailChimp for WordPress that displays all the stats for you um, from Google Analytics in case you're tracking your campaigns. Um, at the very top you have your, your familiar line chart and it shows the point where the newsletter has been sent and then you can directly see how it affected your, your daily traffic at that point in time. Mm. There's still the lovely country map. This is basically just a port from C Crowd Favorites um, plugin into the Joomla Mailer interface. Nope. Okay, if you go on the reports page, oh, I'm sorry, let me start differently. So on the reports page, you have all those different metric metrics at the top. Um, below the stats title. Um, some of them are linkable. For example, who clicked your links? If you click it, um, or how many users clicked your links, uh, you get to another list which shows the links, and then you get to another list which shows the users which clicked the particular link and how many times. And if you, can click, if you click the user, you get a user profile which then summarizes all these things again. Um, at the same time, it will also display some social um, credentials if, if he's entered them into John's, into John's social profile for example um, let's say he, he added his Twitter uh, account name then it will tell you this here and um, his avatar from Twitter will be pulled in um, otherwise his gravatar will be pulled in and so forth um, here at the top you can also see the member rating but next to it is a hotness rating it hasn't quite 
caught on very much because I have a feeling that people don't really drill down so far as to watching every user, but this basically tells you if somebody bought something in Ambra or AEC or Virtumart, um, how active he is as a, as a customer, as a paying customer. Any questions in regards to that? Does anybody use any of these systems with Joomla Mailer on their site? Okay. So the last part is the third party integrations. Um, last main part. Um, a lot of people use K2. We do. You probably do too. So it was a natural um, thing to integrate with them first as a content component. Mm. Work same way, put a checkbox, move on. The community builder um, integration with Joomla Mailer uh, works almost exactly like the Jom Social one. Um, it, it is activated via the registration plugin, and you can capture, just as I had mentioned earlier, any of the fields that you want from, from the registration, uh, from, from the entire profile, matter of fact. Jump Social, in addition to the registration plugin options, also can add contents from your community to, to your newsletters. The two things that you can add at the moment are profiles of uh, special people. If you have um, some site members that you want to feature for some reason, uh, if you're running a dating site or something like that, you can send out profiles just by placing check boxes and you see a multi-select a box above it. Um, with this you can actually choose which of the um, profile information are going to be displayed in the newsletter. Um, what we particularly like is the discussion starters. You can choose the first um, entry of a discussion in JAM Social to be added to your, to your newsletter so to engage with your community. Um, in JAM Social usually you have to be part of a group to receive any type of notification um, about your groups. But if you want to engage your audience and, and, and try to motivate people to, to join other um, groups that are of interest to them, you can see what kind of segmentation options you have uh, based on the profiles that you've collected and then send um, discussion starters by segment to particular groups of people. So next is uh, Ambra Subs and AEC. This was um, particularly interesting for us and a lot of the people that we've worked with um, because most um, use um, subscription systems, especially in the Joomla world. Um, you buy six months or 12 month subscriptions to buy, uh, to get some extensions. And you can also add them to your newsletter if you want people to just straight up buy them. Have a button on there that takes you to the page where you can fill in your, uh, your information and buy the subscription. Do you have a question? No? Okay. So, and this is um, our admin panel module. We obviously like admin praise a lot, so, and the concept of having um, the information that's important to you on the dashboard. And based on this concept, we came up with the admin panel module from which you can directly create your campaign if you like. You log in and you click create campaign and you're straight on the interface that you need to be on. Um, or if you want to quickly check some stats from past newsletter or uh, stay updated on the latest activities from your just sent newsletter, you can check it here. And But it also works with a standard uh, template, of course, but it was actually the initial concept uh, from the admin praise dashboard which inspired us to do this module. The future of Joomla Mailer. What we're working on right now is a content plugin system. We're going to try and make it as easy as possible for you guys to write your own plugins for your own extensions to integrate with the, with the content creation process. Um, what we want to do first is also add um, an Akiba subscriptions plugin to also add Akiba subscriptions um, at the same place that you would add AEC and and Ambra. And we've had incredible amount of requests for Flexi content, so this is actually the one we're currently building. 
The next thing we're looking at is a synchronization plugin system. Um, we realized that Sugar CRM and HiRise only cover a part of the systems that people use. And instead of us trying to build, integrate with all those systems out there, you'll be able to, to write your own little plugins. Yeah, Ken, by the way, uh, was the guy who presented this in, in Chicago. And um, we were, a couple of us were there also, and uh, apparently it was a pretty exciting time. Uh, I wish I could tell you more about uh, how it went for them, but uh, only Kyle of the guys and Melinda were there, of the people that I know here. Um, heard it was a fun time. So there's one more thing that I wanted to show you um, at the very end, if you guys still have a little bit of patience. and. We've partnered up with uh, Standing Cloud. I don't know how many of you guys um, have read anything about them on, on our site. What it is is a it's like a cloud service, mm, cloud service pretty much, which lets you deploy um, your site or an app um, onto the, your favorite cloud, basically Amazon or Rackspace Cloud or GoGrid, Linode, and so on. Um, what we like to use it for on our site is for you to just show oh, internet for you to uh, come on just test drive Joomla Mail without having to install it on your site. Um, what you do is you just click use it now. It starts a Joomla instance for you within 30 seconds. All you need is a Mailchimp API key. And uh, Joomla Mailer is pre-installed. You can play around with it for 50 minutes, I believe. And then it just shuts down. You can start it back up and you know, test drive it for as long as you want. And um, that's it for me. Thank you for coming. If you have questions, you know, talk to me. Go ahead. Yes, um, I've actually been approached about that. <laughs> Theoretically, uh, you could use the the Allchim thing, but um, we'll be looking into it. It's surprising that actually here is where where we've heard most about this. Um, we've had like in six months maybe one request of somebody signing up his uh, his Virtual Mart users, and that's why we haven't really on that. That's right. They are added to your um, to your normal user database though, aren't they? Uh, they're, they're added to the normal user database though in Virtual Mart, correct? You know, I, I'm pretty sure once we're going to have the content plugin system up, um, it's going to be a lot easier to, to handle this, not only the content inclusion, but also uh, what other, you know, little things you'll be able to do with uh, the particular Virtual Mart plugin. Um, we're also looking at the, at the Tienda plugin, um, talking to Raphael, maybe him building it. So um, there's definitely some, some movement in that direction. and. Um, and we'll try to figure something out about the Virtual Mart registration. There just hasn't been a lot of demand for some reason. <laughs> All right. and neither have we. <laughs> yes? Excuse me? Yes, absolutely. That's the, the whole goal of it. You know, so uh, regardless, if you have a client or, you know, it'll be a lot easier than, than it is right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
you can the autoresponder is great you can really go crazy with that thing um, as long as you collect some merge fields as dates you know you can use it for events notifications um, <coughs> Christopher may I disclose he he sends out uh, several um, newsletters automatically to the user even if he doesn't add new content to the site right after they have signed up so they get the feeling um, they're actually getting the newsletter they've signed up for so to keep the list fresh which is a great idea by the way excuse me well MailChimp uh, completely manages that for you um, when you go to the To the list manager. Oh well. When you go to the list manager, um, you can you can click on a particular list and you, you look at your users and they will be colored differently based on whether they've you know um, gone bad or need updated or not. Please. Um, actually, we've been looking into this already. Um, there's a WordPress plugin that does that, the transactional emails. Um, MailChimp has uh, set up an API overlay for Amazon's uh, transactional email API, which they've just released recently. And uh, the, the problem is that you can't add this functionality to Joomla without adding a core patch. Um, what we're actually interested in is adding a core patch for this functionality, but actually allowing you to use a plugin system so that you could also write plugins uh, for transactional emails for like Postmark app, for example, um, and not just the MailChimp one. Actually, only only MailChimp really does that. You can't get any tracking over the Amazon API. Um, um, but I, I guess we'll all have to be a bit patient until, uh, you know, if this ever gets committed. But but I think it's in the interest of everybody to allow people that run Joomla sites to, to use all sorts of different, I mean, not being able to overwrite Jmailer is really frustrating sometimes. Please. It does it automatically when you import them. If uh, if their users, I mean, if the if their members on your site, um, all the people that are on the Mailchimp list, this will also be displayed in or. Um, you basically see this. You know, you won't over overwrite or or create duplicates or create duplicates. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, usually, the overall workflow of people is that you know the first time when when they come across Joomla Mailer, they import their users and then just use the registration plugin. Go ahead. Now, 
Nope. It won't remove the user or so from, from your site. Oh, yes. Yeah you, you can, yeah, you can go into Joomla and actually that's what I forgot to mention. Instead of using the unsubscribe link, you know, theoretically you could also give them the option to, or just place a link to their profile next to the unsubscribe link and there they can literally change all the, the settings that they've set um, during registration. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I'm not even entirely sure if, uh, I don't think we've ever had the case that somebody adds an interest group option in MailChimp and that to go backwards. It's more like, uh, I can tell you certainly that if he saves his profile with, for example, a new favorite fruit, and this will get updated the moment he saves the profile in MailChimp. So you can manage his, his MailChimp profile, newsletter profile from his own Joomla profile. Sure. Same goes for Jump Social. You, you can change your settings. Um, on your jump social profile. Excuse me? If you want to run your inspections, your inbox inspections, or the, the, the doctor program that they have for your emails, and that's really the only time, I think, when they add cool new features, check them out. What? Unfortunately. Sorry, unfortunately. Um, their social pro features because um, they pulled that information in from Rapleaf over their API. Um, we can't actually pull in that data over their API because they don't have the rights to redistribute the, the data that they get pulling from Rapleaf. So we don't actually have all the, the fancy options that they have and all the social stats. <clears throat> but you can pretty much recreate those if you collect them you know, personally from the, from the user during the registration. If they enter the Twitter credential or so, you will also pull out their cloud score and show you that in their, prof in their profile. So you can see how influential some of this. You guys having a good time so far, Jab? Everybody seems a bit sleepy after yesterday. <laughs> Was I? <laughs> hey, I've been up at 9 a.m. like you guys. So do you guys want to know anything else? Um, I don't know what's going on with the internet. Excuse me? Um, at the moment, it's not planned, really. Um, go ahead. Nope. It will just take a while.
Oh, they will. Actually, it's the other way around. Uh, you can import your list, and they'll just, you know, approve you in retrospect. So you definitely can just go ahead and set everything up, and then event, and then eventually, you know, they'll send you an email saying you're good to go or you're not. What you could do is to create a particularly clean list. Um, just add the users from the past two months. You know, you can start off with that. Well, no, uh, um, because they're, uh, because Mailchimp's um, complaints rate is pretty harsh, to some extent, sometimes. Um, what you could do is you can clean your list with your old system. You know, you send out another newsletter. You're, you're explaining to your users that you're switching systems or something. You know, you have a coupon and, and a new template. You know, and, and you let them know, or, or you call them to action to to resubscribe to your newsletter. This way, you just filter out the really interested ones. And you give them some segmentation options. You know, are they interested in Drupal, WordPress in particular, Dr Magento? And um, they'll feel like they'll, they'll get much more targeted information that way. Yes, um, you know, um, oh, oh, above 2,000 subscribers, the, there's fees for different increments. Um, I don't know them off the top of my head, but uh, I think at 50,000 might be around 200 something dollars in costs. Um, but this basically uh, reduces the entire load on your server when, when you're sending out to 150,000 people. Um, so you're saving your money, you know, on your actual server or your cloud or traffic in general. And you're getting a lot of um, more features than you would with the PHP list or other systems like that. else. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Have a good night. Oh, by the way, one last thing. <clears throat> uh, my session tomorrow morning at 9, if uh, any of you guys want to come, um, is going to have uh, just a small part of MailChimp to it, but I'm going to be talking about a couple other things, which is uh, the content uploader that we've built, where you can uh, upload a spreadsheet and populate your site with it. Um, each row turns into an article. K2 support, all that stuff. Um, that's the gist of the speech tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.